So I'm going to talk about uh, invariants of Calabi-Yau Kähler manifolds. So to tell you what they are, Kähler manifold has uh, two compatible structures. It's got an integrable complex structure and a symplectic structure, which is a closed non-degenerate two-form, which we call omega. And these two things make a Kähler structure if they're compatible in the sense that there's a way of clicking up a Riemannian metric out of them like that. And this Kähler manifold's called Calabi-Yau if it admits a nowhere vanishing holomorphic n-form omega, capital omega. So you can call that a holomorphic volume form. Um, and what I'm interested in studying is uh, this uh, phenomenon called mirror symmetry. So it means different things in different contexts, but it always has the same broad outline. So let me give that broad outline. Um, so when you've got one of these kalabi yau kähler manifolds, you've got some invariants of the symplectic structure, which don't depend on the complex structure at all. And those are called the A model. And you've got some invariants of the complex structure, which don't depend on the symplectic structure, and those are called the B model. Those names come from, uh, from string theory. But A means symplectic, B means complex. And then these uh, two manifolds, kalabi manifolds, are said to be mirror if there are equivalences between the invariants on these two manifolds, but the symplectic invariants get swapped with the complex ones. But which invariants you look at uh, differs in different formulations of mirror symmetry. So I'm going to talk about two main formulations. So the first one is, uh, I should say, genus zero closed string invariants. So on the algebraic geometry side, uh, you look at a smooth family of n-dimensional calabi varieties over a punctured disk with maximally unipotent monodromy around the puncture at zero. Maximally unipotent monodromy somehow means the, the monodromy when you go around this, uh, this puncture is, is kind of as complicated as possible. Um, so the, the set of complex invariants that we're interested in here is the corresponding variation of Hodge structures on the middle dimensional cohomology of this family. Sorry, the, the, the monodromy. The yes. Um, uh, there exists uh, a way of, so variation of Hodge structures is maybe a more sophisticated invariant. There's a simpler one we can cook up out of it, which is just a function on this punctured disk. And to get that function, you uh, do some procedure for choosing a normalized family of holomorphic volume forms on this family of varieties, call them omega t. And then this function at the point t is the integral of this normalized holomorphic volume form wedged with itself hit n times with the gauss manin connection in the direction of this tangent vector in the base. So there's this procedure for just getting a function of a single variable out of this family of varieties. Okay. Uh, what's the corresponding thing on the symplectic geometry side? Well, it looks very different. It's what's called the gromov witten invariance of the, the variety M. So these are invariants which count holomorphic maps of a Riemann surface into your manifold. Um, so you might think because we're looking at holomorphic things, it's a complex invariant, but it, it turns out not to depend on the integrable complex structure, only to depend on uh, the homotopy, the, the class of almost complex structures, which is determined by the symplectic form. So really it's a symplectic invariant. Um, so some examples, non-trivial Gromov-Witten invariants, the number of 
degree one curves through two generic points in CPN is one. The number of conics through five generic points in CP2 is one. The number of lines on a cubic surface is 27. So these are some examples of gromov witten invariants. Not on Colobier manifolds, these are Fano, but uh, that's the idea. And then um, crazily, you can assemble these into a variation of Hodge structures on the cohomology of this manifold parameterized by some formal variable T in the punctured disk. This is work of Dubrovin and Morrison and other people. Uh, so one part of that structure uh, is the quantum cohomology ring, which is an associative deformation of the cohomology ring over this formal power series ring in this one formal variable, capital T. And here's how you define it. You, uh, you say that the product of two classes, alpha and beta, is determined by specifying its Poincaré pairing with a third class gamma, and that pairing is given by the count of holomorphic maps from CP1 into your manifold with three marked points constrained to lie on cycles, Poincaré dual to alpha, beta, and gamma. And the way this formal variable T enters into it is you weight this count by T to the power of the intersection number of this, sorry, U is the, the, the sphere there, uh, with some divisor Poincaré dual to the symplectic class. can cook up out of these invariants, you can cook up this variation of pod structures, but then there's the simpler invariant that's just a function, the Yukawa coupling, and that's the pairing of the top quantum pro power of the symplectic class with the identity. So in 1991, some string theorists made some uh, crazy predictions out of this conjecture. They looked at M, the quintic threefold, quintic hypersurface in CP4. They cooked up some mirror N to that. It's an explicit family of varieties, but I'm not going to write it down. Mirror symmetry predicts our coupling on the B side equals the Yukawa coupling on the A side after some explicit change of variables between these formal parameters, which are called the mirror map. And this gives you some prediction for this function, which is some kind of generating function for counts of curves in the quintic threefold. So it predicts there are 2,875 lines, 609,250 conics, and so on. And the first three of these numbers had been computed, but the rest weren't known. They weren't known to have any structure to them. Um, and here was this crazy thing that just gives them all at once. Very theatrical. And this was proven for the quintic threefold and for uh, complete intersections in toric varieties, more generally, uh, by Giventhal and Lian, Liu, and Yao. But there are certainly many more cases where this kind of conjecture is expected to hold, but not known to hold. So what I'm more interested in studying is called homological mirror symmetry. So here, we have to change what we mean by these A model and B model. So here the A model is the Fukaya category. It's defined over a coefficient ring, which is a formal power series ring in one variable, like the quantum cohomology was. Its objects are Lagrangian submanifolds, which are middle dimensional submanifolds in which the symplectic form vanishes. Morphisms between Lagrangian submanifolds are intersection points between Lagrangians. And composition maps count holomorphic maps of disks into the manifold with boundary on the Lagrangians. So here's a picture of composition. If you want to compose this intersection point between L0 and L1 with this intersection point between L1 and L2, well, the coefficient of intersection point R between L0 and L2 in the composition of P with Q is the number of holomorphic disks looking like this. Okay, so that's the Fukaya category, briefly. On the algebraic geometry side, uh, what you put for the B model is the derived category of coherent sheaves on this manifold, which we've seen um, a couple of talks about in the last couple of weeks here. 
So Kinsevich conjectured that if two varieties are mirror, there should be equivalences of categories between the two sides that interchange this symplectic Fukaya category and this derived category of coherent sheaves, the symplectic and the complex invariants. So important questions, is this conjecture true and how generally? Um, so we know it's true in some cases, uh, but even in those cases, uh, you would dearly love to use it to say something about symplectic topology, about classifying Lagrangians in some symplectic manifold, but there still really aren't very many uh, great results in that, using mirror symmetry to prove things like that. Um, and also, in quite a different direction, uh, does it imply closed string mirror symmetry? This one that I talked about that involves variations of Hodge structures and Yukawa couplings. Kinsevich, in 1994, when he made this conjecture, uh, conjectured that it does imply closed string mirror symmetry via uh, a program called non-commutative Hodge theory. So, it, in answer to the first question, to do with the first question I just asked, um, my thesis was about proving that if M is the quintic threefold and N is that mirror to it that the string theorists gave, then there's an equivalence of categories between the Fukaya category and the derived category of coherent sheaves on that mirror. After you make some formal change of variables in the, in the base field, um, which is called the mirror map, which also appeared in the closed string version. So the question I want to talk about is really about the third question from the previous slide. Does this result imply closed string mirror symmetry and therefore give us a reproof of that computation of all the curve counts on the quintic threefold? Uh, so when, when I said that uh, this, I was always looking at uh, a family of, of varieties parameterized by some formal disk. In this result, what I am really looking at is a smooth n-dimensional uh, Calabi-Yau variety over spec of C of T, T inverse. Okay. So, I want to say what I'm, one of the, the things I'm trying to do. I'm interested in answering all of those, those three questions I said, but this is about one which is joint work in progress with Tim Perutz and Shil Ganatra. So we hope to prove that indeed from this homological mirror symmetry result we can prove closed string mirror symmetry. Are you talking about that in general or in the specific example? In general, yes. So the implication is well. Yes. Well, homological mirror symmetry is, uh, is known in far fewer examples than closed string mirror symmetry. Yes. Um, right, so, so just to say quickly how this works, on the B model, this non-commutative Hodge theory I talked about is quite developed. Uh, it gives you a procedure for reconstructing the variation of Hodge structures from the derived category. As far as I understand from the literature, uh, that procedure is not all there in the literature yet but uh, a lot of it is. Um, even less of it is there on the Fukaya category side. So the aim of our project is to show that exactly the same procedure when applied to the Fukaya category gives back the A model variation of Hodge structures. Variation of Hodge structures might be too hard, but, I, but we're pretty clear on how we should go about proving uh, that the Yukawa coupling can be extracted. Um, okay, and, and to answer a little more that question, so closed string mirror symmetry is known um, for all 
Fano and Calabi Yao hypersurfaces in toric varieties, which is lots of examples. If you're talking about uh, Calabi Yao um, complete intersections in, in toric varieties, uh, it's, it's basically in, in dimension three, this is the only this is the only result. But these categories have much nicer functorial properties than um, the closed string invariants do. So there's, there's a good hope that once this technology is developed, it will lead to, um, once the technology is there, proofs will become easier. Okay, thank you. <laughs>